So this is not a phone, it's a $200 device that makes spatial computing on Android a reality. This is the Xreal Beam Pro. When you connect it to Xreal AR glasses like the Air 2, you can throw all your Android 2D apps into your space, resize them and move them wherever you want. This is a big deal because while Meta is working on similar tech for their Quest MR headsets, it is the first time we can place our Android Android 2D apps around us in a glasses form factor. Picture checking your email while watching YouTube, streaming Netflix while scrolling on X, or gaming while chatting on Discord. The glasses become your screen so you can chill in any comfy position and get stuff done anywhere. The Beam Pro runs on Android 14, giving you full access to the Google Play Store. So anything you can do on your Android phone, you can now do spatially with the Beam Pro. It's a lot like like what Apple did with the Vision Pro, even launching your app library in a similar way. But here's the thing, while the concept is cool, the execution could use some work. Good day everyone, Cass here and stick around as I dive into the specs, what you can actually do with this device and if it's worth it. Join me beyond reality. Before the Beam Pro came out, you could use your X-Real glasses to mirror your devices. For example, if you hooked it up to a Steam Deck, you would see your game in the glasses, making it look like you were playing on a big TV screen. The same thing happened if you connected it to a phone. You could mirror the screen, but it was limiting because you could only see one screen and you could not control this screen. On some devices, you could download the X-Real app, which lets you fix the screen in your space. However, this drained your phone's battery much faster and not all devices supported this feature. Xreal glasses often had compatibility issues making it confusing for users. That is why Xreal decided to create a product that's guaranteed to work and offers more features for everyone. The Beam Pro isn't meant to replace your phone but to free it up for other important things. I think it's a smart move and exciting to see Android spatial computing grow. But with a $200 price tag, I can't imagine it to be super powerful, so let's talk about its capabilities. After a quick message from Prism XR, thanks to them for sponsoring this segment. If your AR or VR headset needs extra power, this wearable battery pack might be just what you need. This is the Karina W1 battery pack and I really like its dual wearable modes, on your waist or crossbody, so you can charge your devices hands-free anytime and anywhere, which is great for VR and AR since you're often moving around. It fits comfortably too and the magnetic buckle makes it easy to attach and detach. The power bank has a 10,000 mAh capacity and supports 30 watts fast charging. Extending your VR AR sessions by up to 6 hours depending on what you're using it for. It will work with any USB-C device like the Quest 3 but also other devices like a gaming console, 360 camera or even the Xreal Beam Pro. I've been using this and so nice not having to stuff a power bank into my tiny pockets. If you're interested, check out the link below. Now let's continue. Inside the box, you'll find the Beam Pro, a guide and documentation, plus an SD card ejector tool. The Beam Pro is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon Spatial Companion processor. It's a lower-end chip, but a relatively new 4nm chipset found in budget Android phones. The screen is a 6.5-inch 2K LCD. Furthermore, it's a supports Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2 and has a 4300 mAh battery with 27 watts fast charge support. The device is IP54 water and dust resistant and includes various sensors like proximity, ambient light, accelerometer, gyro and compass. For the cameras, it features dual ultra-wide 50 megapixel cameras for standard photos and videos. These cameras are spaced at a 50 mm in the lens distance for capturing 3D photos and videos. There's also an 8 megapixel front-facing camera for selfies. The Beam Pro comes in two memory and storage options, 6 GB and 128 or 8 and 256, with up to 1 TB expandable microSD storage, which is why we got that uh, ejector tool so we can easily eject this thing out. You can choose between 5G or Wi-Fi only versions with pricing starting at $199 which is, in my opinion, a surprisingly affordable price. 
But to use spatial computing features, you will need actual glasses, which start at $299 for the first generation. Your screen experience will vary slightly depending on the glasses you choose. I'm currently using the Actual Air 2 Pro, which features two Sony OLED panels with a 46 degree field of view. When connected to the Beam Pro, it provides a full HD screen at 90 Hz with three degrees of freedom. The latest generation, the Xreal Air 2 Ultra is coming soon and will be the only one to support six degrees of freedom with the Beam Pro on its own. The Beam Pro looks and works just like a phone. If you've used an Android phone before, the interface will feel familiar. However, there are two key differences. First, the Beam Pro doubles as a 3D camera, allowing you to take spatial photos and videos that you can view in 3D through your glasses. I'll dive into what this is like a bit later. Second, when you connect it to Xreal glasses, it automatically launches Nebula OS, an operating system designed to spatialize your Android apps. The Beam Beam Pro transforms into what Xreal calls a spatial mouse. The device becomes a laser pointer that you control by physically moving the Beam Pro, and the display shows a touchpad. There's a big home button to open the menu or, if you long press it, to recenter the laser pointer. At the top, there are a few shortcuts, an anti-miss touch button that locks the device to prevent misclicks, a camera button to scan QR codes, a recording button to record what you see, and a screen shot button. The square below is the touchpad, which you tap to click and perform gestures like swipe for scrolling, and it works very smoothly. You can also connect an external Bluetooth keyboard and mouse or an all-in-one. The keyboard works perfectly, the mouse works too, but sometimes has some quirks with certain apps like not being able to select text or right-click. In those cases, you can use the Beam Pro as the spatial mouse instead. When Nebula OS launches, all your apps appear in a neatly designed menu, which I'm sure they took inspiration from the Apple Vision Pro menu. Now, you can use it just like an Android phone. Download and install apps via the Google Play Store, then launch them from this menu. At the moment, you can only multitask with two apps at the time. Xview mentioned they're working on supporting more apps, but given the lower end chip, it is likely that it has limitations, so I don't expect to run many apps simultaneously like you could with Quest 3 or Vision Pro. When you launch an app, it shows up in front of you. If you launch a second app, it will be placed to the side. At the top right, there are more options. Select the screen size, medium or large, enable a white screen, go back or closing the app. You can move the windows around by dragging the bar in the middle. Using the Beam Pro touchpad, you have two extra shortcuts. Swipe up to easily switch between open apps similar to alt tapping on a PC. Swipe down to open a submenu that shows device info like battery life and current time. The Beam Pro offers two modes out of the box, smooth follow and in this mode, the screen follows your head movements. Body Anchor in this mode fixes your screen in one spot, so it stays there no matter where your head turns. However, since my glasses only support 3 DAF, the screens stay fixed in place around you. This means you can't lean in to get a closer look, and if you walk around, the screen will follow your position, but remain fixed at the angle that you set. Now, I've been using this setup to write this script, and I've encountered a few things along the way. Let's start with the cons. And I one is that the software still feels quite early. Unlike full mixed reality headsets like the Apple Vision Pro or MetaQuest 3, the Beam Pro doesn't have its own native XR content. At the time of making this video, there are two apps to download made for the glasses, but they're so far pretty gimmicky. The main usage is providing a portable screen for accessing existing Android 2D apps. However, since the apps aren't made with spatialization in mind, some apps can be a bit buggy. For example, I've had small issues with apps not opening links, apps not resizing properly, and I've also experienced my fair share of crashes. These are usually resolved quickly by restarting the Xreal app, but it makes me hesitant to use anything that doesn't autosave. This is somewhat expected since Xreal built a new system on top of Android that has many third-party apps which are outside of Xreal's control, and they're pretty new in the software department. Performance-wise, it's generally okay. When it works, it works smoothly, but there are a number of small things that could have made the user experience much better. For instance, when I connect an external keyboard, the virtual keyboard still appears and can't be removed even after toggling it off in the settings. 
this can be quite distracting while trying to type. Unfortunately, the apps don't resize responsively either, meaning even when I set an app to large, the apps don't actually get more space to spread out. They just get zoomed in without adding more room for content. It's not like a responsive design where things adjust to fit the screen better. These are things that could potentially be an easy fix by software updates though. What can't be fixed by software is the max resolution, which may not be great for all type of use cases. Like I said, the Beam Pro offers full HD, so apps render in a compact view. This can be quite limiting for work, like using a small tablet instead of a 4K monitor. For example, apps like Google Docs and Discord appear cramped. This isn't an issue for entertainment though, like watching movies or scrolling social media. I mean, it still feels like a bigger screen than using your phone. The full HD resolution might sound small, but since the screen is so close up your face, it actually feels like you're watching on a larger screen. Like I'm watching Netflix now and this is how big the screen feels. It's a little bit like your own cozy cinema, except minus the overpriced snacks and sticky floor. However, the smaller field of view of these glasses is also limiting. Setting the window to large causes it to go outside of my field of view, so I tend to work in medium size as I prefer seeing my entire app at once. Battery life is also quite short, lasting about 2-3 to three hours, however you can now power the device while using it since it has two USB-C ports, one for the glasses and one for charging. Just keep this in mind depending on how you plan to use the device. Now it's not all cons, the Beam Pro has its strengths too. For starters, the screens are perfectly stabilized, so they don't shake like some similar glasses. After a while, like one hour of working, the screen may drift slightly, however this is a minor inconvenience since there is an easy calibration setup to fix it. Overall, it offers a very smooth view experience. I love that I can connect an external keyboard and mouse and many different keyboards I've tried work right out of the box. You can also connect gaming controllers and play games on Xbox Game Pass or similar apps. The major advantage is having access to all Android apps. This makes it easy to get your workflow or gaming flow going since all the necessary apps you are probably using already are available. Plus, the Beam Pro supports DRM, so Netflix and other streaming services work without issues. There's a lot you can do and that's the benefit of using an existing well-developed OS like Android and I think that's a smart move by Xreal. How your screen looks and how sharp it will be depends on the glasses you choose and subjective factors like your face shape. I use the Xreal Air 2 Pro and the readability is clear enough for me to read. I wrote this entire script in this setup actually and it was very very clear and smooth. Watching movies is also great with good colors and sounds directed to my ears with almost no sound leak. I can even use it in the plane, without people hearing what I'm hearing. I also love the body anchor mode, even with just a 3 dove, it definitely still feels like spatial computing because I have my screen fixed somewhere in place. Now it's not the same level of immersion as full 6 dof mixed reality headsets like the Vision Pro, but there's also a significant price difference to consider. Then there's the spatial camera feature. Xreal calls this a native spatial camera because it's designed specifically specifically for this purpose. The cameras are placed at a 50mm distance on purpose to make the 3D effect more comfortable and pop out more. The 3D photos and videos are definitely impressive. When viewed in the glasses, the 3D effects truly stand out, but the camera does struggle in darker environments and very fast moving objects. When you take a picture, there's a slight delay, so if your subject is moving a lot like my friend's super cute new puppy, the photo can be blurry and the 3D effect isn't very clear, making it a bit uncomfortable to look at. It is still possible to capture moving objects, for example it took sharp and well-defined photos of me and my friend bouldering with beautiful 3D effects. I also love Xreal's secret feature in the Photos app called Memory View, which displays all your spatial media around you in 3D space. While you can mostly just look at the thumbnails, there's a lot of potential for this feature and I hope we'll see more updates for it in the future. Future. Aside from shooting spatial content, you can still use the camera to shoot normal photos and videos. However, I don't see myself using this much since my uh, phone's camera is better. To sum up, the Beam Pro has its quirks like 
early software issues and some hardware limitations. This makes it feel like an early adopter product instead of a finished one. But on the bright side, it already offers a good alternative way to view your 2D Android apps on a larger screen. On an immensely portable setup, which is particularly useful for light work and entertainment on the go. If you don't want to bend your neck to look down at your phone, for example, the Beam Pro could be a great, more comfortable option. However, be aware of its limitations and make sure it fits your specific needs. I think the Beam Pro software has a lot of potential, but considering Xreal is a smaller company than Apple or Meta, it might be challenging for them to fully realize this potential without support from Google and the upcoming Android XR platform. So I really hope that they will work together eventually. At the moment, the Beam Pro software isn't as integrated as the Apple Vision Pro, and the Meta Quest 3 might be more capable in the long run. But those are heavy headsets. These glasses offer a much more comfortable alternative, even if they're not quite as powerful yet. That said, software is key and Xreal's move to innovate more in this space is promising, so I'm very interested to see where this leads. What do you think about the Beam Pro? Are you going to get one? Let me know why yes or why not down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like as it's a huge support and subscribe if you never want to miss anything.